Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virgil here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial. I will be using my prompt and process cards and I'll be showing you three ways to use those stencils. One is brand new. I've rarely used it before. So these are my prompt and process cards. I have them laminated. And if you're interested in purchasing them, you can get them at Nini's Napkins. The link is in the description box below. She also carries a lot of art journaling and mixed media supplies, including the TCW stencils. So I am going to do the game This or That. And in that, I'm going to deal myself two cards and I have to choose this one or that one. So it's limiting your choices. Now, one of them may not even be applicable for that stage you're at. You may not like it, so you pick whichever one. So I'm going to use collage papers to build the first layer and break the page. Collage papers could be tissue papers, could be parts of colored napkins, could be magazines, book papers, music papers, whatever. So I have picked purple, burgundy, fuchsia colors along with the golden color of the aged music papers because there's some yellow in some of those and, and gold in some of those collage papers. I'm ripping off the edges and I'm just arranging this on the page. Uh, by the way, I'm using my 9 by 12 Canson mixed media art journal and I've taken it off the coil so I can work flat. So I'm ripping off edges, I'm working, I want some solids, I want some patterns, I want some darks, I want some lights, you want some variety. Because this is the first layer, it may or may not show up at the end, it will definitely add texture and it will definitely guide your color choices and make some of those decisions for you or point you in the direction that you're going. So once I have the arrangement all done and I spent an awful lot of time rearranging and arranging it, Finally decided enough and let's just glue it down. I'm using my fluid matte medium from Liquitex to glue them down. And since there's lots of layers here, you wanna make sure that you really dry this afterwards before you move to the next layer. Now in the back of my mind, I wanna keep that white space. Now I dealt two cards, one of them said, um, use DIY mark makers. I was having a whole lot of trouble with my camera today. It kept shutting off and I kept missing parts. So it won't be the last time in this video, but you get the most of it. So I'm taking some black paint and I'm spreading it on my glass. This is just a glass from an old frame that I'm using. Otherwise, I would be using just my tabletop, which is all glass, but for the picture so I can bring it into view for the camera. Now I'm using, this is a trivet and it has this honeycomb pattern, great stamp. And then I have some homemade stamps. Now when you stamp with acrylic paint as opposed to archival ink or any kind of ink, you also get a little bit of texture. So this is another stamp. This was from a sink liner that I cut and I made a stamp out of one part of it. And I know I'm going to be putting color on here. So I'm not too worried about what's going on. This is just the second layer. And remember mixed media art journaling is all about building those interesting layers. So the next one says use a brayer to apply colors. Apply, apply color to the focal image or wash to the focal image. Well, I don't have a focal image, so I'm going to put the brayer on here. And I'm thinking, okay, there's magenta on here. What color do I want? Remember I said I wanted to keep that white space? So I decide I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna neutralize this and put white gesso on the brayer and I'm just rolling it off. And that's kind of knocking back the brightness and melding everything together. And at this point, I'm kind of happy with what's happening. I've got that white space down the middle. Still not sure what orientation I'm doing. So that's why I'm switching it one way or the other because I'm hoping that the page is going to tell me. And then I grab some pink and right there it's like, ugh. 
not really happy. I try to wipe that off. I, I wanted to keep my white space. So I come back in with white gesso. It's not really doing it. So I mix the quinacridone magenta with some black and I get this deep burgundy-ish color, which I love. But as you can see, braring on, it's kind of made a very cohesive background, but there's nothing that's really standing out. So the next card, one of the cards that I dealt was use modeling paste. And again, my camera didn't get it. So I'm using TCW modeling paste through this chicken wire reversed stencil. And I'm putting it in three areas. And I chose white because I thought it was going to give me enough contrast and may frame what I would decide to use for a focal image. One of the things when you're using the prompt cards, you don't know what's coming next. So it's hard to predict and you need to figure out a way of making it work. It's a great way of challenging yourself. But please, re please, if it's frustrating you, if it's not something you want to be doing, deal yourself another one. It's all about stimulating the creative process. Now, as much as I like this background, I really didn't know what to do with it. And I was sitting with it on my desk and I had my ink tense blocks there and I started colorizing in between where I had put the modeling paste and adding more color. And I like the look of that. So here I've stopped the dealing myself the two cards and I'm doing what I think the page needs. It needs some stronger colors. So I'm using kind of the magenta, a Shiraz color and purple color and painting in with my ink tense blocks over top. And this is adding some richness to this and some color. And I'm, I'm liking how that's working. So please give yourself permission to deviate from the game. The, the process cards are about challenging yourself, about stimulating that creative process or giving you ideas for what could come next when you're stuck. It should not make you stuck. And at some point in time, on every page, you know where you want to go with it. That's the time to put away the process cards and do what you need to do. Follow your instincts. So I'm really liking this look. It's brought out the texture. But I am thinking that I'm missing... something. So I'm flipping through my cards, coming up with an idea. And this one says a wash of gesso. So like, okay, you know what? I like the white space before. So I am just coming in with a makeup sponge and watered down gesso and I'm pushing that back. I'm reclaiming white space. At this point, you can see all the texture. You can see some of the pattern from our paper, the papers that I put down. And as you can see, those collage papers have dictated the color scheme. They've given me pattern. They've given me texture. I'm just building up the colors here, purple and pink. And you can still see all the mark making and texture 
underneath that chicken wire stenciling. So I'm flipping through again to figure out, okay, what do I want to do next? Which is another way you can use the process cards. And I come across the card, you know, to use block and blend to apply color. So I'm going to come in with the quinacridone magenta with purple on top. And I wanted to keep this fairly light and watered down so that I could still see some of the papers underneath. And you can see the texture. I just lost all the pattern with it. And that's okay. The page became what it wanted to become. And I'm bringing in that magenta. Now, the, one of the cards that I had from early on was the DIY mark makers. So I'm revisiting that. That's part of this page. And since I lost this, I'm reintroducing it. I love the honeycomb one. It goes really well with the chicken wire reverse stencil. It's a different scale, but they work well together. Then I come in with this other homemade stamp with white paint. And I don't like it. <laughs> this It's too big of a scale. So I just grab the quinacridone magenta paint and the purple paint, and I'm just getting rid of this. There really is nothing that you can do that you can't undo. And doing a page is really all about just responding to what's happening. Here is the tiny dots or mini dots stencil from the Crafters Workshop. Loving this one right now. It's the great, it's a great size. The title that I put on this, the sentiment is old ways won't open new doors. And that's part of using the prompt and process cards. Shake yourself up. This is screen view and I'm putting the magenta on here to introduce it to the background. So the prompt cards, you know, are forcing us, pushing us to try new things because then we discover something new. Trace stencil or parts of the stencil or stamp into wet acrylic. I'm going to trace a stencil. Now this is something new. Stencils are great. Now this is from my change sentiment pack. I change, perseverance, believe, and BU all come with a couple pages of script or text that you can print off. And that's what I printed off here. So I'm taking this trumpet daffodil stencil from the Crafters Workshop and tracing around it on this text. Now this is a message, it's about change. And I'm having that kind of journaling on my page. Then I'm stenciling the middle of this Daffodil. And then I'm just going to cut this out. I've just printed this on regular copy paper. You could put it on mixed media paper or cardstock, whatever you like. So if I was doing this on a canvas for someone, I could put down the message of what I want to send them, the good wishes and the and the my hopes for them. So this is all about change. 
So I'm putting the stencil back and I'm also tracing there's some lines around the outside and you'll see what I do with that coming up. But I didn't want all the detail that, that the artist put into that stencil. So I'm using it how I want to use it. But any floral stencil, any, um, all the ones from Valentina in this release, she's got lots of flowers and some butterflies. They all work well for, to use as a tracer. I'm gluing this down with my fluid matte medium and I'm giving it a good coat on top because I'm going to shade now. And I'm going to, I'm using the floating acrylic technique with my angle brush. If you're searching on my channel for any, any techniques, if you're in my channel, go to the search bar in my channel and put in floating acrylic or negative painting or stencils. And that will bring up videos in my channel that you may want to watch. Shading on the inside. And this just makes it look like a daffodil. And the, remember those lines I drew in? Now I'm shading on them. And it's just giving a little more shape to my focal image. And using the black and white really works well with the background, with the black and white stenciling, the white modeling paste. So the three ways I've used the stencil here, I've traced the stencil, I've put modeling paste through the stencil, and I've just put paint through the stencil and just stenciled with it. I'm shading inside the honeycomb pattern, the chicken wire reversed just to add a little more dimension, a little more interest. So the DIY, I'm adding a little bit more. I wanted a little bit more white in the background, so I'm revisiting that card. It was dealt early on. Then I grabbed a sentiment from my change sentiment pack. These are also available in any napkin as digital downloads. And I'm just cutting it apart to remove some of that white. I don't want it to, do, to have too much white or weight with it to take away from the focal image. And then I'm shading around the sentiment. with my black acrylic paint and edging it with it, the same technique. It's been quite a journey. It pushed me out of my comfort zone. I did something new. I'm really happy with the end result. Let me know what you think. And now I'll do the recap. So I started by collaging gel prints and this started the color story. It gave texture to the page and also directed some of my pattern choices. I used, the next one was using a DIY mark making tools. So I grabbed those out and I kept revisiting this prompt throughout. I used a brayer to apply the colors. And while you can't see it, the brayer added texture. You'll see that in the close-ups coming up. I put modeling paste through the stencil. And this is where I did, stopped doing the this and that and just use my prompt cards to guide me. I applied a wash of white gesso to push back the parts I didn't like and I colorized it, both with my ink tense blocks and with acrylic paint. And that just brought the whole page together. I came back to the DIY mark makers and I put it on top of the paint because I liked those things. 
those colors. Then I added some stenciling in a smaller scale, the tiny dots or mini dots and the screen view stencil. And there's smaller versions of the circles that are on the chicken wire reverse. Then I traced this daffodil stencil on script that contains the message that I want to give you all about change. I shaded on the outside, on the inside, and then the inside lines from the stencil. I added the sentiment, and then I shaded around the sentiment, and I edged the page. I also splattered with gold paint, but again, my camera didn't show that. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you pick a stencil and trace it. Let me know how that goes. Bye for now. Go get creative.